Hi, my name is Representative Ephraim Elliott and you've just been placed on alert. Welcome to the Elliott Alert. I have today my guest is Chancellor Davis from our great university, University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, Chancellor, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for inviting me. That uh, Chancellor, <laughs> I, I know uh, during the 88th General Assembly, we mm -hmm. were talking about a lot of things in, in reference to education. There were some things that you were very passionate with, right. and you, you uh, expressed that to me and the other legislators. So we want to make sure that uh, those issues are addressed and, and that our community knows. Now, what are some of the things uh, that uh, kind of, um, I, I guess, uh, struck the uh, nerve with you in reference well, to education? Well, one of the things that really struck the, uh, the nerve most severely with me uh, was a discussion about remediation. Yeah. And, of course, I think the legislature should be commended for causing it to become an issue. Right. Because it, just think about this. For an African-American male, his chances are twice yeah. of going to jail than college. There's something right. wrong with that picture. Mm -hmm. We also have a problem with the percentage of students in Arkansas mm -hmm. uh, who are having to have remediation. Right. And then it's more severe with the African American population. Actually, it's a national crisis. Right. And it's going to lead this nation to becoming a third rate nation because uh, your ability to lead has a lot to do with the preparation of your citizens. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing that people need to understand is what remediation is really all about. Mm -hmm. It comes from the word remedy. Yes, sir. Remedy means a cure, uh, a solution for a problem. Is that not right? That's correct. Okay, well, the problem is, is that we are moving students through our educational spectrum, mm -hmm. the educational continuum, P through 13, mm -hmm who are not prepared at the level that they should be uh, prepared. Now, you know, the question can always be, you know, what is the level of preparation they should have? I don't think they really defined that. Right. But uh, what happens is, is that we get into this whirlpool of blame, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the college and university, we say, well, the students come to us unprepared. Mm -hmm. And then the elementary schools, People say the same thing. Then finally they say, well, it's, it's the problem of the home. The challenge is, is that we need to do something about it. Right. Okay? Now, the fact that they passed some legislation this time mm -hmm. is fortuitous because what it's going to do is force us to do what I've been trying to get people to do for a long time, mm -hmm. which is to address what the real issues are and solve it. How can you go through 12 years of school and then you can't do basic mathematics, you can't read, and you can't write. There's mm -hmm. something wrong with that picture. Right. So apparently what we're doing is just passing through people through the stream. Now what we have to understand is that we have what you, a, a educational continuum. Mm -hmm. You know, we're artificially separated into tiers. Mm -hmm. You know, kindergarten, elementary school, college, there's no such thing. We have one educational system. Mm -hmm. Now. The solution is, number one, is that all of these entities that think they are separate universities or universities need to sit down together and work on what we need to work on. Now, first of all, you know, when I was in high school, it was a different day. Students who didn't make what we considered the standard did not get a diploma from high school. Right. They got a certificate of attendance, yeah. plus the fact the high schools, in a sense, were better because we had more than one uh, mode of education. Mm -hmm. For example, when I was in high school, not only did I have to take trigonometry, geometry, algebra, mm -hmm. English and history, and hygiene and all right. of that, physical <laughs> education, right. but I also had to take drafting, mm -hmm. which was very good because I learned how to s draw objects in 3D perspective, which was very valuable in Calculus three. Right. Uh, I had to take machine shop under Mr. Shoemate. I learned how to make gears and dye, use dye and all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Because if you make a gear and it has teeth, and you're going to put 20 teeth on this circumference, then that's some arithmetic that you have got to you. do, yeah. okay? <laughs> yes, then I had to take copper. I never could mm -hmm. figure out how to take a 
plane <laughs> and plane the board out evening, but I, I had to take it. Right. And you learn how to manage your boards, mm -hmm. and then I had to take uh, electricity. Mm -hmm. So that I learned the um, code, color code for resistors and so forth. The mm -hmm. point I'm trying to make is there is one more than one mode of education. Now, mm -hmm. what we should do is, first of all, you shouldn't move a student from one grade to the next until they have satisfied the previous grade. Okay. Now that means that you're going to have to do some things mm -hmm. over and above what you normally do in order to help that student. If you know the students in the first grade and they have not learned their alphabets and the uh, multiplication table, then you need to do some things in the evening, on the weekend. All right. All right. Now our, our, our uh, excuse is going to be we don't have the money, but we're building all of these prisons and millions of dollars, paying people. Uh, big salaries to watch people eat. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir. Just think about it. You keep building these prisons, now you have a prison industry. It doesn't make sense. We're in the center of it right here in Pine Bluff. Yes, sir. So you keep sending people to jail and taking care of them for the rest of their lives. And I keep telling people that we have to solve the problem because n all of the people in this society are going to survive one way or the other. Yes, sir. Okay? Mm -hmm. so what are the four ways? One is they can be criminals. Mm -hmm. Like I listened to a program last night, and the boy said, you know, why should I go down here and work for $4 an hour when I can get on the corner and make $600 an hour for that day? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but it doesn't <laughs> last, though. No, it doesn't <laughs> last, but think of what the alternatives are. Okay, the second yeah. thing is they're going to be on welfare, right? Yes, sir. And the welfare system is designed for you not to get off of it. Right. And really, it should be designed as a transition to another level. Mm -hmm. Then the next part that you can be is incarcerated. Correct. And uh, it costs more to incarcerate a person a year yeah. than it does to send them to college for four years. Isn't that right? <laughs> yes. At UAPB especially. Yeah. Or they can be working. But working means that you have to have a, 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 a skill. Yes, sir. And what mm -hmm. is it? Mm -hmm. You know? And I was reading something the other day, and they said uh, all these great athletes, you know, that make all this big money. Yes. Somebody has to handle that money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so you need to train some people to do right. other things. Mm -hmm. You know, if you need a plumber today, right. they, they, it's big time money, isn't it? Yeah, it's all right. Electrician, a carpenter. <laughs> yes, sir. So, but we don't have anything that's really preparing people for alternative education. Now, the point that I made about those uh, extra uh, courses that I had in machine shop and so forth was that that was part of our learning also. Mm -hmm. Not all of us learn by sitting and listening to someone talk. Mm -hmm. Now, there's really no excuse for it because in this age of technology, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. and uh, right now I tell them that the technology is zero level. You know, right. everyone has it. Mm -hmm. It's all over the world. Just like you just told them a while ago uh, that your program can be seen on UAPB TV streaming. Do you realize you can see it all over the world? Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> Everything sir. I'm saying now is permanently there all over the world. You can't even even erase it. That's right. <laughs> so why don't we use the technology mm -hmm. to expand our ability to teach people? Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Uh, back, and that's one thing about this nation that's really great. Mm -hmm. Whenever we commit to a problem, right. we solve it. Mm -hmm. You see, yes, just sir. like we just read about them finding uh, the gentleman over there yeah. in uh, the I guess, uh, wherever he was, Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we will do it because we made a commitment. Mm -hmm. Now, previously, a commitment we made was when the Russians sent up Sputnik. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we realized that possibly we had fallen behind right. uh, in technology and the space race. Mm -hmm. So what did we do? Kennedy said, we're going to the moon. Ten years, they go to the moon. Think about it. Yes, sir. Develop the technology that they need it, mm -hmm. and we got all kinds of spinoffs from that, like Velcro patches and all kinds of things right. came, and torqueless wrenches mm -hmm. came from that, uh, that uh, effort. But mm -hmm. also what we did was we had all kinds of institutes to train teachers. Mm -hmm. We had all kinds of research support to make that happen. So the fact that we haven't done anything about remediation tells you what? We have not made a commitment to do anything about it. Now, once we make the commitment, we will solve it. Now, the other thing that they did, uh, they used television to help teach people. Yes. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Back in the day, we had what we call Continental Classroom. Mm -hmm. John Kelly, chairman of mathematics at Harvard, I mean at Berkeley, taught 
uh, the, what they call the new math. We didn't have any new math. Just the, the, the <laughs> right. language became more precise. Mm -hmm. Uh, at 6 a.m. in the morning. So if you wanted to learn, you could get up at 6 a.m. in the morning, right? Yes, sir. All right, then later, the second uh, course was probability statistics. You just get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Now, we have a high illiteracy rate, you mm -hmm. know, which contributes to the poor performance in education. So what do you do? Many of the people that are illiterate are uh, uh, self-conscious about coming to you and yes. letting you know I'm a grown person. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that STOP means stop, okay? Right. <laughs> That kind of thing. So what do you do? You use the television mm -hmm. and technology. Now, also, you have a dearth of qualified teachers. Yeah. The reason being that if you are smart enough to master computer science and the technology, you're probably smart enough to get a job to pay more money than teaching. <laughs> and right when, they, when, when, the, when the social uh, restrictions were removed, Mm -hmm. Many of our best African-American teachers left, went to TRW, went to Texas Instrument. You couldn't blame them. Yes, sir. You know, you're making 15000 somebody getting ready to give you 70. So why would you yes, stay sir. in the teaching field? <laughs> Plus the fact, all of the challenges that you have at that level, okay? Yes, sir. Now, but you do have some people that are very gifted teachers, mm -hmm. all right? Why not let them rove? You know what I'm saying? Well, In other words, there's no reason. When you, you talk about Rove. Uh, R-O-V-E, Rove. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm going to go right into break. And after oh, that, sorry. I want you to talk. <laughs> after that, I want you to talk to about uh, Rove. I can do that because this is something I'm very passionate about. <laughs> yes, sir. Detalles sencillos tienen el mayor impacto. Por eso toma el tiempo y hoy sea un buen papá. Tres, dos, campeones. Cuando estás acostumbrado a hacer algo con un cigarrillo, se vuelve más difícil hacerlo sin él. Pero si puedes volver a aprender a reunirte con tus amigos sin cigarrillos, puedes aprender a hacer cualquier cosa sin cigarrillos. Vuelve a aprender a vivir sin cigarrillos gratis en conviértete en un ex .org, una nueva manera de pensar en dejar de fumar. Welcome back to the Elliot Alert. I have our great chancellor from the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, uh, Dr. Davis. Uh, Dr. Davis, you were just talking about uh, Rove, R-O-V, and, and before mm -hmm. we go into that, I, I want to ask you, because uh, Dr. Kimball from the Department mm -hmm. of Ex Education was just here, mm -hmm. and um, he was kind of mentioning some of the things that you were in reference to new ways that we can educate mm -hmm. our kids. and. Um, uh, what, what do you think about some of those things? Okay, well, excellent. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I'm proposing. Right. That we have to augment uh, the current system because it isn't working. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. to continue to do something that's not working is insanity if you think you're going to get a different result. Right. But, mm -hmm. but you see, what, let, so what do you do? Stay after school. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. Use weekend. Mm -hmm. Most of the school buildings are vacant from Saturday through Sunday, right? Yes, sir. That's a waste of resources. Mm -hmm. Our churches should join in. You know, that's the reason yes, we started Sunday school in the first place, teach people how to read. Yeah. You know about that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's the reason you read in Sunday school. Right. So if you didn't learn to read in school, you could learn to read in Sunday in school Sunday if you school, were there. Right. <laughs> but those are exactly what I'm talking about. Because mm -hmm. see, what we have done, uh, you know, under this uh, uh, pressure to do something about the economy, mm -hmm. we have killed some cities. Yeah. Go down to some of these cities going south and uh, uh, east and see how they're devastated because you have closed the school mm -hmm. and the school was the center of everything in the town. There's nothing there mm -hmm. except especially for African Americans. So you take the kids and you bust them over to another school, mm -hmm. and they're not telling the people that when they bust those kids over there, they now have a problem dealing with uh, confrontation, fights, and all of that, right. which you have created that problem for yourself, mm -hmm. okay? Because if I go to school over here, and you're my rival, and you force me to go over there and join them, mm -hmm. 
you automatically have created a problem. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, and they say, well, we're saving money. You're not saving money because you aren't getting any results out of it. Right. So what do you do? You have some people that are very skilled at teaching mm -hmm. in the sciences, mathematics, the critical area. Pay the people. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's one of the greatest incentives you can have for excellence. Right. That Pain. doesn't guarantee excellence, mm -hmm. but I'm certainly telling you that rewards have a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. And let them go from school to school. Like right here in Pine Bluff, mm -hmm. they're teaching advanced placement calculus, okay? Yes, sir. One person could have all four of those classes. All they would have to do is schedule, and you move from this school to that school to this school. Mm -hmm. And that way, you can have the very best teachers Wow. teaching your students. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to get in that because it's right. personal. <laughs> but, you know, I volunteered right. and taught advanced placement calculus with, under the direction of my uh, wife, who was certified to teach. I'm not certified right. to teach in high school. <laughs> but I taught it over there for five years. Wow. In five years, we only had two students, and they had to take the national exam. They aren't doing it now, mm -hmm. who did not make the three that is necessary for you to get college credit. Mm -hmm. And one of those told me the other day that when he went to college, he saw what the calculus book was. He said, I've already had it. <laughs> so they said, well, you have. <laughs> he said, well, do you want to test out? He said, yeah. He said, you studied six weeks, made an A on midterm. Studied six weeks, made an A on the final. Because it's not rocket science to know what people need to know. Mm -hmm. And if you are not uh, astute enough in your discipline mm -hmm. to teach the average person, then you don't know enough. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. Yeah, you know, I tell people now that if you have average intelligence and you will work hard, I can take you through calculus. Wow. Because it's nothing but common sense. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand, and I have to understand what you don't understand. Right. <laughs> if I tell you, if I bring a kid from Chicago and I give him a calculus problem and say, now, we're putting corn into this silo at the rate of five bushels per minute at such and such a time, how high will the corn be in the silo? Well, first thing you got to know is what the silo is. Right. If you're from Chicago, uh, <laughs> you, don't have no blame, idea, you may right? not know. <laughs> then you have exactly. other people who uh, uh, come from homes where if you have a deck of cards or a pair of dice, it's a sin. Right. So I want to teach you mm -hmm. probability statistics, which you need to know what the probability of pulling an ace out of a deck of 52 cards, right? Right. Well, first thing you got to know is that you got four suits. Each suit has 13 cards. There are four aces. Right. That, well, if you don't, and see, so people come in and assume people know that, but they mm -hmm. don't. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have a big language gap here, mm -hmm. which is contributing to the written mediation. Yeah. See, they told me, so they said they looked at the difference in performance of African Americans and uh, Caucasians on the uh, act test, for example, a national exam. Mm -hmm. You know, they never talk about the highest performing groups, though, which are the Asians who make yeah. it higher than everybody, but, you know, that's another story. Right. They always <laughs> talk about the gap between African Americans and Caucasians. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, they gave eighth grade students a, 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 a test where you have a square. Then you cross hatch the square into 16 smaller squares, and you color four of those squares. You say, what fraction of the squares have been colored? Now, do you understand that if you have average intelligence, the only reason you can't answer that question, you don't know what I just asked you? Right. <laughs> and, and that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, what is contributing to some of this remediation is language. Yes, sir. You people have to use the language of the textbook because that's what the test is in. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. So one of the first things we've got to do is work with this language thing. And when it comes to African Americans who have the greatest remediation rate, uh -huh. we have got to remove this concept that being smart and brilliant and knowledgeable is non-black. Right. <laughs> if, you, if, the, if people really knew their history, that's really not emphasize so much, mm -hmm. they would know some of the greatest scholars, you know, and that the seed of civilization started out in Mother Africa. Africa. Yes, that, 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 that there are a lot of scholars. Mm -hmm. And when I was growing up, that's all I had. I didn't know anything about the rest of this world. I was almost grown, you understand? <laughs> but anyway, that's one of the things that we've got to address because the governor has said, and he should, that uh, we got to increase our graduate, double it by 2025. Mm -hmm. Well, one way you're going to be able to do that, you got to get more people moving through the system. Right. 
But you've got to prepare them mm -hmm. to be successful in the system, which means some of those things that Dr. Kimball talked about, mm -hmm. the technology that I'm talking mm -hmm. about, that right. very quickly you're going to mm -hmm. have to... Mm, I, yes, sir. That's all right. Sorry. <laughs> you go very quickly, you're going to have to address this problem. And you can't talk about what it costs you. Right. Because think about what it's costing you now. Now, then, Chancellor, do we address the problem at pre-K and K? Yeah, you start at the home. Okay. See, so. for example, mm -hmm. we are driven by positive incentives and decentives. I guess that would be the word I'd call it, right? Yes, sir. All right. How do you do that? Okay. First of all, you have a large number of people who require welfare assistance. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. We, we have some. You need to tie that assistance. To education? To education. Okay. You see, in other words, right now, uh, the system is designed so people can get out. Okay, if you're a young lady and you have a child or two children or three children, mm -hmm. that your support is going to be dependent on your supporting the schools and educating your children so that we don't have to keep put, putting them in welfare. Man, you, you you talking about something, you know, uh, Chancellor? There, <laughs> look, it, it, it's a trap. Yeah. Now, see, you know, yeah. people don't like me to say this, but at my age, I can say what I want right. to say. <laughs> yes, but, sir. <laughs> but we are in a new slavery. Yeah. Because slavery, and when I say we, who am I talking about? African American, anybody on welfare, really, was a system in which in exchange for your labor, hmm. you got food, shelter and clothes, whatever that was, okay? Yes, sir. All right. But then what was the negative side? You weren't able to control nothing. The end of the day. You weren't, didn't have freedom. Exactly. Well, if you're on welfare now, certain things you can't do. You can't get a man in the house if you got those children there. You understand? Yes, sir. So you're trapped. Mm -hmm. You only have to, you have to do what I say in order to get those food stamps. <laughs> so how, how do we, and, and through educating them and help educating them, we can get them out of that trap and onto a better life? You got to provide people with skills. See, the other thing that you realize is the greatest resource that you have mm -hmm. is human capital. Yes, sir. Now, mm -hmm. the southern states, what did we do? We started shipping all of our talent no, why? Because they couldn't get the same uh, opportunities here. Yes, you, well, I travel all over the United States, California, mm -hmm. Texas, uh, Missouri, uh, New York, it's Illinois. Mm -hmm. Our graduates up there doing well. They're running yeah. the city. They're they mayors. Sure they're preachers. They're yes, a government officials, just mm -hmm. like Danny Davis in Chicago. Yes, mm -hmm. Who's but why are they there? Because right. they didn't have that opportunity here. Mm -hmm. And people create the economy. Mm -hmm. So what do you end up with? Some of those who uh, maybe be sight bound or uh, don't have the talent or wherewithal to move into a more competitive environment. See, so like right now, we graduated some students in an area, I won't call the name of the area. They're getting great positions all over the country, 60, 70, 1,000 starting out. But they can't find anything here. Right. <laughs> So, uh, Chancellor, um, I mean, how do we change that? How do, how do we... Well, first of all, what did I say when we started talking? You, can't, you don't get anything done until you make a commitment. A we commitment. have not committed right. to doing anything. Mm -hmm. You know, now that's the reason I said that that legislation mm -hmm. that was recently passed having to do with remediation and all of accountability is a good because it's a catalyst to mm -hmm. make someone make a commitment. Right. And see, what I just suggested at the educational conference the other day, all of these people in these various tiers of education mm -hmm. need to sit down together at the table yes, sir. and find a solution. But we first have got to make what? A commitment. A commitment. Mm -hmm. Until you make a commitment, you can't get it, anything done. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what has been exasperating to me is that African Americans have not been upset and excited uh, at the remediation rate of African Americans. You know, they blame UAPB because we're trying to help solve the problem. We right. didn't create it. Right. 
what created it was sharecropping and slavery. Right. I'm just telling you. And also in reference to there's there's been a lot of stu students that needed remediation who have graduated and done great things. Well, the whole and, thing is, what does that mean? You know, I have a ingrown toenail. <laughs> okay, I'll say you have that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You go to the doctor, you get it fixed. Right. Just because you had one, that means you're an inferior person. Right. <laughs> I, I know a young man right now just mm -hmm. got his master's degree mm -hmm. from the Clinton School wow. and was at the top of the class who had to have two courses in remediation. Not because he didn't have the mental ability. He had never been exposed. How could you pass a test? In algebra, you never had a course. Right. The act test, you know, and I, I, I know about the math part because I wrote questions for the act test. They paid us $90 a set, Mrs. Davis and I. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. In order to make above 16 on that math act test, you should have had a course in algebra, trigonometry, geometry, and not just sat in one, had a good one. A good one. Mm -hmm. Because in order to get above that, you have to have knowledge of those areas. Mm -hmm. So if you go through school and they put you over here in a track, you know, uh, non -com mathematics is non-competitive, mm -hmm. you don't expect to make anything. Right. So what happens? The average act score of students at UAPB is the average act score of African American. Why? Because the majority of our students are African American. Mm -hmm. Now, if you check all of the state institutions, their remediation rate is directly proportional to the percentage of African Americans in the population, except for one school, and theirs is due to the Hispanic population. Right. Now these people holler about standards, and they want to set act test score. Start with the athletes. <laughs> yes, sir. you know they, 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 you know they, the athletes don't have any problem getting in. Right. <laughs> and I doubt that they're all making over 21. You understand? Yes, sir. You know, it, it, so we really need to sit down and be realistic. Because uh, if you look at who is earning the degrees in the critical area, engineering, mathematics, science, physics, it's not enough African Americans and not enough Caucasians either. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is going to eventually <laughs> be uh, the downfall of this nation if we don't make a commitment and solve it. Well. Chancellor, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show, and I, I want to let you know I want you to come back so we can finish this. <laughs> well, you know, I'm very passionate about yes, what sir. I'm talking yes, about sir. because you know, I spent my life trying to help people get educated. And I've yes, got, uh, I have uh, products out there, young yes, people that have PhDs in mathematics, physics, and engineer. Because you first, you remember what Mr. Obama said? I don't know whether you came to the graduation, but she said something that I keep repeating over and over again. Hmm. When you see someone that looks like you doing something. It makes you believe you can do it too. I agree with you. Thank you again, <laughs> Chancellor. You've just been placed on alert. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>